The saying goes that justice delayed is justice denied. With the DNA backlog growing month by month, can we actually afford to have justice denied to the thousands of victims of gender-based violence in the country? Civil rights organization Action Society says the backlog stands at 1.2 million samples. 1.2 million. It says the DNA Oversight Board, tasked to investigate and resolve the issue, has only met once since the police minister appointed them over a year ago. Can you believe that? Only once, according to this organization. Well, let's discuss this issue. Uh, Action Society spokesperson Ilani uh, van der Waalt joining me now for that conversation. Ilani, thank you for joining me. My goodness, where do you even begin to pinpoint why this crucial cog of the machine uh, of delivering justice for those who've been violated. Uh, why is it broken? Thanks for the opportunity, uh, Tula Uh You know, it's been a long, long coming crisis, the DNA backlog, and it, it, it's, it's laid in front of the, of the door of, of the Minister of Police. Um, he does not seem to be taking any urgency to resolve this crisis. Uh, as you just said, the DNA Oversight Board was appointed by the Minister of Police in June 2020. And they're supposed to be giving regular feedback and had to come up with an urgent turnaround strategy, um, you know, to resolve this, this backlog that's been increasing since June 2020. Um, but, but, you know, there are a lot of reports and a lot of talks and a lot of plans, but, but in actual fact, the, the, the backlog is just increasing. Nothing is happening on the ground to fix this issue. And every day new cases are added onto this backlog. So 1.2 million is where we stand now. How did we arrive at that number? So that's, that number, just, just to give clarity on that number, um, there are 300,000 cases, according to our information, there are 300,000 cases that are still backlogged. This has increased from May 2020 when it was 208,000. So that's a 44% increase. Um, with every, with every um, court case, there could be anything between one and 12 pieces of DNA evidence. So if you work on an average of four, let's say four pieces of evidence per case, um, and you multiply that by the 300,000, there's 1.2 million pieces of evidence that needs to be analyzed um, in order to be submitted to court for, for court cases. And that's an astronomical um, amount. And, and as you all know, crime, crime is not waiting. Uh, there's 116 women are raped um, every day in South Africa. That gives you another 3,400 rape cases per month. So it's just, it's just adding on to this massive number that's just not being sorted out. And the government is really not taking responsibility to sort out this crisis. And there's no overstating what the consequences are, Ilani, is there? I mean, given the, the, the other uh, pandemic that we face, uh, the perpetual pandemic that we've faced in this country around the abuse and violence meted out by men in our society uh, against women. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, 2,700 women are murdered every year in South Africa. And what, what this DNA backlog means is that victims and, and, and families of, of victims of crime are not getting their day in court. Perpetrators are walking free. Uh, they're getting out on bail. Eventually, court, court cases are struck off the roll. So the, the criminals are going free and they, they can reoffend. And it's not bringing justice to victims, victims in South of, of, of GBV and violent crime in South Africa. It's, mm. it's becoming a human rights um, issue, actually. With the DNA Oversight Board not meeting, uh, according to your information, uh, as frequently as perhaps they should, where do you think the problem lies, Ilani? Is it, is it a matter of not enough labs, not enough um, human capital and people to perform the tests? Or is it a matter of you know, not enough budget being dedicated to this particular function of dispensing justice? Okay. It's not a lack of funds. A lot of a lot of funds has been made available to sort out this crisis. It's a lack of urgency. It's a lack of responsibility. Um, the DNA Oversight Board uh, were put in place to turn around this crisis, which which started in June last year. So they took over from the previous DNA Oversight Board. 
um, the, a big issue with with the with the lab, specifically with the forensic um, science laboratories, is procurement. Um, there was a there was a lot of contract issues in procurement of materials and consumables to actually do the physical DNA testing. Another issue is machines that are not being maintained and that are not functioning properly. Uh, the portfolio committee actually had a, had a um, a walkthrough or a site visit there in May, and it, it came under the attention only then that that half of the machines at the at the uh, lab in Pretoria hasn't been working since November, 2020. So uh, the people are there. Is, the staff is not an issue. It, it's they just don't have the tools to actually do the work. And uh, Treasury at this stage, the, the money has been made available to sort out the consumable issues. But now Treasury is drag or dragging their feet to to issue purchase orders, which just delays the whole process once again. Oh, yeah. And we just feel we just feel the, the DNA Oversight Board are the guys that are supposed to be turning this thing around. And when we requested information from them on, you know, what the exact backlog is, what, you know, what's being done to the backlog, they couldn't answer these questions. So for, for a, a, a group that was put in place to sort this out, surely they should be knowing what's going on on the ground. And Absolutely. it just doesn't seem that they are. Lastly, Ilani, um, let me ask you uh, something of a political question then. Uh, when we started this conversation, you said the Minister of Police uh, is not showing any urgency around this particular issue. Are you then disappointed that he has kept his job? I mean, in your view, I mean, we all have our measures and standards uh, by which we measure the performance of those who serve in cabinet. But I imagine that for you and the work that you do, uh, this is a, a critical area of, of, of his functions. What is your sense then? Are you disappointed that he remains in position? Tula Sizo, we've been actively advocating um, for Mr. Mr. Minister Sele to be removed from his position because this is just one of the things that he's failing the nation in. Um, he's not he's not showing any leadership or accountability, and and that's why the structures underneath him are following suit and and they they're following their leader. And at this stage, he's not leading. He's, not, he's got no accountability. Uh, we're actively campaigning for him to actually be removed from his position, um, and and we feel that. All of these things lie in front of his door. It's his responsibility. All right, Ilani van der Valt, thank you so much for your time and insights. She is from Action Society. Shame on all of you who are letting us down in this regard. Shame on all of you. In a country like this, with the situation we face on the issues of violence against women, and no one is taking charge of sorting out this DNA backlog, shame on all of you. You don't deserve to be called leaders, actually.